Hey yo, welcome back to Son of a Cyclist. My name is Nick Aaron, and today we're gonna go over indoor training, the environment that you train in, and everything you can do to make it as enjoyable as possible. Now we all know that training and riding indoors will never take the place of getting out on the road, propelling yourself forward, nature around you, and the wind blowing in your face. However, there are a couple things that I've learned over the years of indoor training that have helped make indoor training a little more enjoyable, which we're gonna go over today, and hopefully it'll help make your experience a little more fun as well. There are multiple different styles and brands of indoor trainer systems, but today we're gonna to discuss two, a stationary trainer and a set of smart rollers, and my preference of why I prefer one over the other. I love riding my bike, and I'd be out every day, all day if I could, but time isn't always in my favor, and I know a lot of you are like me. I'm married with two kids who are involved in sports, I got a full-time job, two dogs, and a laundry list of other things that keep me off the bike when it's all I'd rather be doing. There's some people out there that are able to get out and ride on the road whenever they want. Whether they're retired or their job allows it, training indoors has its purpose, whether you're a professional athlete or an everyday Joe. But to some of us, it's our only resort to getting on the bike in the middle of the week and sometimes on the weekends. Let's take a look at this next clip and see if you can relate. Everything was great with me and the wife, but it was just too quiet. So we had a daughter. She seemed to be a good egg, so we had a son to level out the household. Work is important to help pay for the castle, but sucks up a good chunk of my work week. Can't miss that wedding on the weekend, and then straight to soccer practice. Family's a priority, so let's spend the night playing games. Softball practice during the week, and Saturday, Sunday, out of town tournaments. It would be rude to miss your third cousin's baby shower. The most hated question in my life, what's for dinner? And of course, mother nature conveniently ruining that one day you had no plans. Your living situation, your available space, and your budget will play a big factor into how you set up your training area. While I fully understand that having a setup like this is not necessarily realistic for everyone, for me, it plays a big part in enjoying the environment where I come out and ride through the week. I've been working on my training area over the last year and a half, and in hopes of getting this YouTube channel started, I finally finished it up this last month. So while it might not be the most amazing and elaborate training studio, it turned out exactly how I envisioned. I'm excited to show you guys, so let's check out some B-roll. Keep in mind that your training area doesn't need to be like that at all. This was just a personal thing and something that I enjoyed doing. It also helps keep me motivated to coming out and enjoying the space that I'm in. All right, now that we've talked about the environment and where we ride, let's talk about the differences between a stationary trainer and a set of rollers. This is your basic stationary made trainer. They also make fluid trainers, which will give you a much smoother feel. These adjustment points lock your bike into place and keep it upright. Make sure your skewers are securely fit and tighten down to prevent slipping out while on the bike. When you tighten here, be careful not to pinch the derailleur cable or the derailleur itself, which would cause damage.
line your wheel, center with the roller, and adjust till you make solid contact with the tire. You don't want the tire to have any slip, so jerk the wheel back and forth a little bit just to check. If you do feel any slipping, then adjust as needed. Using a wheel chalk helps level the bike and prevents the wheel and handlebars from moving. Once you're on the bike, you can use your gears for resistance. While this gets you on the bike and your legs spinning, I find stationary trainers very boring as your bike stays locked in the upright position. I found myself losing interest and motivation when this was my only source of training indoors, as it just didn't feel like it replicated riding on the road. But you can try simple things like riding in front of a TV, computer, or a tablet to watch a movie. You can also use Zwift with a basic setup as long as you have the needed speed and cadence sensors and a USB cord. Now let's compare the stationary trainer to a set of Inside Ride eMotion smart rollers. As you can see, there's nothing that locks your bike into place because you balance yourself on the cylinder drums. This cable keeps the front and middle drum spinning at the same speed. Bumpers prevent rolling off the sides, and of course, it is adjustable to fit different bike sizes. These are e-motion rollers, which means they use a forward and back motion, which absorbs the inertia, making it much easier to ride. Rollers without this feature are certainly rideable, but can be more difficult. When starting out on rollers, the thought of speeding up can be intimidating, but trust me when I say the more force you apply to the pedals, you will feel more balanced and secure on the bike. This elasticity makes standing out of the saddle and sprinting much easier to do without losing balance. As you can see, the movement of the bike and my body is much more natural as if I was riding on the road. Out of the saddle efforts can take some time to become confident in giving full power as you establish a rhythm with the movement of the rollers, but once you get the hang of it, it becomes second nature. This is the motor which gives resistance to replicate climbing a hill when using programs like Zwift. So when you hear the word smart system, this is what it is referring to the ability to work with your computer via USB or Bluetooth and adjust to the terrain you see in front of you. This truly adds to the realistic experience. I also highly recommend getting a couple fans to help cool you off. While training indoors, the air around you is stagnant, so fans will create some airflow and help keep you from overheating. Okay, so hopefully that was a good breakdown for you and the differences between a basic stationary trainer and something much more advanced in a smart resistance set of rollers. Maybe you already have an old set of rollers at home or a stationary trainer, and you're wanting to upgrade to be able to use something with Zwift. While you will have to spend a little more on a smart type system, there are still a lot of affordable options out there for you. If you're new to the sport and you realize that you just can't get on the bike as much as you thought you were able to, and you're tossing around the idea of some sort of indoor trainer system, check your local classifieds. People will buy stationary trainers or rollers all the time, only to have them sit around and collect dust and then sell them for half the price. So some of you watching this might be wondering why I'm not mentioning the Wahoo Kicker. I don't have one, and I just don't have a lot of experience with it. However, I do know it's a great product, so if you're looking for a stationary style trainer that is also compatible with smart systems such as Zwift, you won't regret it, and I know you'll probably be happy with it. So whether you're looking to get creative and upgrade the area and environment of where you're training, or whether you're just trying to start out and get a trainer or a set of rollers to start doing indoor training, hopefully watching this video helped you out a little bit. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up, be sure to subscribe, and hit that bell notification for future videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.